Hey guys, I'm finally back. Happy New Year, by the way. Um, this video is going to be the first video I'm going to post in 2022, which is very strange. But yeah, I was basically reflecting on last year, what I've accomplished, what I'm really proud of, you know, focusing on the positive stuff. And first thing that I thought was the biggest career change I've ever made in my life. I don't think I've ever talked about what kind of job I did, um, but I used to work in a childcare for almost like four years. And last year, I think it was like October, November-ish, I made the biggest career change and I am a digital marketer. Even the field is so different. Like I didn't stay in the education field anymore. I just wanted just like a fresh new start. So that's why I decided to make this career change. And I thought it would be just interesting thing to talk about. So yeah, I will talk about why and how I personally made this career change. And just a disclaimer that this video is not going to be like a tutorial video. Like this is just like, a, I guess like a story time, I guess, like my personal process behind that. And also if you are ever thinking of making a career change, then I hope this video will give you that little push of encouragement and yeah i wish you all the best good luck if you're looking for a new job or i know it's so stressful i know how time consuming it is but you will get there so good luck and another thing i know i don't want the intro to get too long but i also want to say that i'm not here to say that everyone should go and make a career change like i know people who even who wants to make a career change they can't because of financial reasons or everyone's from a different background they have different reasons i personally am from a poor background so i know what it's like it's just like you need to pay the rent you need to pay for food and even though if you want to make that big career change you, you just physically mentally stuck in that place and so i'm not here to say like oh we all should just make career change blah 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 so i don't want it to sound trying to brag about it or make it sound like everyone should do the same because you know everyone don't have the same 24 hours so if you know what i mean you know what i mean i think this story will make more sense if i talk about the background and how long i've been working as a childcare and then i would just get into like why i decided to make a career change and stuff so first of all really in the beginning i used to work in retail um i was a sales assistant i worked there for like a year and with sales assistant job um if you've ever worked there you know that it's the sh working shift is very unstable um, you re you rarely get weekends off, you have to work on the weekends. Even the shift itself is very unpredictable. Like with my job, with the late shift, I had to work until 11 p.m. And then after that, I, ha I go and eat dinner, I go home. It was just like my life was so unstable. I had so much stress. Even my skin was just irritated. I had so many, so much acne. I was struggling physically and mentally. I needed to kind of like change career that has Monday to Friday and would get the weekends off and has like a stable working hours. And the first thing that came up in my mind was that I want to work somewhere that I can use English because back then my English skills was declining. It was so bad. <laughs> And I just cannot do that to myself. Like I worked so hard to maintain my English skills and like I just didn't want that to disappear. So I knew that I wanted to be in an environment where I have to speak English. Back then, my cousin, she was like three years old or something. Sometimes she would come to grandparents' place. So I would look after her, you know, hang out with her. And then gradually I was like, oh, this is fun. You know, like hanging out with kids, you know, I think this might work yeah so the first thing was like maybe i can work in like i don't know international nurseries and stuff because japan is very very common to have um there's basically like a normal japanese state nursery and there's like a private nursery it's not only for international nurseries but they're like private ones and then i wanted to work somewhere that speak english i was looking for those jobs in osaka so it's like a quite a big city the place i found was i think it was the second place i 
got, um, did the interview and I got the job and basically I had literally zero experience working with children luckily I do benefit from this system but in Japan if you speak English you are like appreciated more basically with my contract with that specific nursery I was paid extra because I can speak English um, I had to like show some kind of a like an English test certificate or something to show that like, this is my level yeah so I got paid extra which was nice for me but yeah that's that's kind of how it worked <laughs> so I worked there for about like a year and a half like almost two years and after that I decided to move to the UK so I had to leave so I left Japan and I moved to the UK and obviously it was just natural for me to find another childcare job in the UK so I got the job in my local nursery and luckily that nursery provided training for level 3 early years practitioner like a qualification basically um, they have level 2 and level 3 in the UK level 3 is more like in depth more I guess more difficult um, so yeah when I started working in the nursery I again it was very natural for me to work there and I love children so yeah everything was like tick tick um, I'll get qualified tick you know like everything was good I was happy but after a year and a half I got qualified amazing I'm still proud of myself for that like that's my actual first qualification that I've ever gotten and first qualification I got was in a foreign country so I'm like kind of proud of myself that so yeah I am a qualified early age practitioner or nursery nurse whatever you want to call it there's so many ways to call this role but after I got qualified the first thing that I was thinking was what can I go next, like, what's the next step for me? If you're qualified, some benefits are like you get ex you get paid a bit extra, like slightly extra. If you choose to you know, get like a new role, then you can within the nursery. Some people like to take the room leader role, so basically you have more responsibility, you have to be the leader to you know manage everyone in your group or like you know within your team so yeah that's kind of like one promotion another promotion some people choose to become a manager so there are some ways that you can become a manager but for me personally I was never really interested in both roles it was I mean like it's already a physically demanding job <laughs> already and you have so much responsibility and on top of that like having extra key children having more responsibility um you know becoming a room lead everything it, I, I don't think it just worked for me that's when i started to realize like what's my what's the professional development here like what what can i gain from here because i'm already qualified i got what i wanted like what's next kind of thing so that's when I started to like question myself the second thing I think this was I guess that most of the people can relate to it is because of you know after this whole pandemic started there were more jobs or like opportunities with remote work and I started to kind of like see the benefit of those like remote works like I started to think like I kind of want to start doing those jobs instead of like like working really hard like physically and being exhausted all the time I just kind of like had enough of it I've already I've written down some notes so I'm just gonna start reading through that so I can stay in the topic so yeah so going back to that me being tired all the time if you've worked in a childcare or for your parents I'm, I'm sure you know that you get sick constantly children bring so much diseases everywhere and you're constantly sick and you don't really get support from that like even if you're sick you know you rarely get paid for being sick or even if you get sick it's really hard to take a day off because you know that if you stay at home then your colleagues are the one that have to 
basically suffer because they lost one member of staff on that day so like, you have those pressure to you feel like you have to push yourself more and it's just physically and mentally very exhausting like I remember every single evening I was just sleeping on this sofa after I came home I had to sleep before I eat that, that's how tired I was I'm sick all the time I cannot remember the last time I was like really healthy when I was working as a nursery teacher so yeah like those are kind of the reasons why I started to re-evaluate my life and because during the pandemic like time is money or kind of like life is too short that's when I started to think do I want to stay in this job being exhausted all the time always like moaning about the job and basically I wasn't happy I wasn't happy I was stressed I was exhausted i felt sorry for my husband because i always have to mom and everything and he's the one that have to listen to everything <laughs> like it it was just, it, it was such like a toxic like environment for me and also i think before i i was never a career person never like i always thought job is just a job job is where you make money and that's how you pay rent you pay food all sorts of stuff but I think the older I got and I feel like the more financially the more you you're like stable you I think I started to think more about maybe I do want to focus on my career and then I want to challenge myself and see where it can take me and yeah so those are like mainly the reasons why I started to think like oh, maybe I want a career change but the last straw was I, I don't want to sound like ungrateful because I am grateful from all of the experiences I had I never never ever think like all the experiences I had was a waste because I had those experiences I you know I am a person who I am now I've learned so much but the one last straw was as you may know that I started my Invisalign treatment so and obviously for treatment I don't go there often but usually right in the beginning I have to go like once a month and stuff and orthodontists don't open on the weekend it's always Monday and Friday my working schedule is Monday to Friday so it was really hard for me to go to an appointment even just going to an appointment even if it was just like one hour it was really really difficult because the job itself is all, all about ratio like you have to have enough member of staff to look after a certain number of children so i get that safeguarding thing i get that but at the same time i also have a life <laughs> i have things to do so yeah i was like nope i had enough of it i want my life back like i want the job that's more flexible and can fit my work lifestyle instead of adjusting my lifestyle to work if that makes sense like before I was kind of basically controlled by work so I could not really do my personal or the chores and everything but I started to think more like no I don't want that I want my lifestyle first and then have the flexible job yeah just like everything all those like stuff kind of started to affect my perspective on work and just yeah like lifestyle balance right so let's get into so how did i actually make this career change i think that's the most interesting part isn't it um so first of all well, what i really needed to think was what am i interested in what's my priority what do i want from work and i knew some points that are like what i wanted what kind of job i wanted first of all flexible work remote work i wanted to work from home um, or some kind of job that have that option. I wanted to work something very creative and more digital related because obviously I personally do like social media and stuff and you know the more you do social media I feel like you kind of start to gain a little knowledge or like skills. Maybe this might sound silly but I think it's true like you know you start to learn more about like a market in this like fashion world or something or like some kind of editing skill sets or marketing skills like naturally you will start to do some research how to grow your instagram account for example and then you will start to learn more about oh uh, like seo different ads i never done ads but you know there are some different options how to grow your account and stuff and i've done some research 
just because I was purely interested in it and then I thought I was like well why can I not do this as a job like I think this would be very interesting and I'm already interested in that topic it's natural for me to just find a job related to that second of all is is to build a portfolio for me it worked so much during that interview process you can show it to everyone like look this is what I made this is my skills this is the knowledge I have and you can actually basically show off your a project that you've did also you, there's so many things that you can talk about because you personally did it you put your energy and time towards it so that's what I did I never really put my social media in CV and stuff like I've never done that before but for this case I've never worked in anything like digital related job it's always starting from somewhere is the hardest like finding a first job in the you know completely different field is the hardest place so I knew that like I knew that I don't have any qualification related to you know this digital world um, I don't have a degree and this was also an advice as well um, uh, my friend worked in like a fashion company and that friend advised me to put Instagram account, YouTube account on my CV so that you can explain and talk about what kind of um, experiences I have, um, what kind of collaboration I did in the past, you know, just talk about my own experience and how I basically put like different skill sets into growing, you know, like a digital platform. Um, I know that people don't feel comfortable doing that, so I'm not saying like you should, but that's what I did and it worked for me. Also, I did watch lots of like digital marketing interview process, what kind of questions you're gonna, uh, you're gonna be asked, what kind of answers you should prepare. Um, actually, I will link some videos down below if you're ever interested. Some videos are in Japanese, some videos are in English, but I will still link it down below if you're ever interested. I've, um, these videos were so helpful for me. I wrote down so many memos on my notebook. I prepared all the answers I needed to answer. With my job interview was I did both in Japanese and English, so it was important for me to to be more organized and to be prepared in both languages so that's what I did again you know it just depends on what you're looking for basically and this I think is just can be applied to anything is just put yourself out there just put yourself out there don't be shy even if you fail I don't think failing is bad like because you fail you learn so much from it don't just let it be as a failure learn from that experience and then apply to the next stage and then it will it will definitely link to your success that's that's my belief anyway <laughs> like I know it's so it can be very embarrassing it can be very humiliating if you don't get a job or if the interview process doesn't go well but again because from that so you can remember it and then study more basically <laughs> so yeah just put yourself out there don't take everything too personally that's what my husband told me don't take everything too personally sometimes just that company is not specifically looking for a person that have like a skill set that you have maybe they're looking for a different skills or different experiences you know like from the com company perspective they have different reasons to look for people so yeah just don't take it too personally I, <laughs> I personally find that really hard I do take it personally but yeah try not to um, and then again it's kind of like a link to what I said but just study by yourself there's so many free resources out there on YouTube on Google whatever like so many like coursework or online thing online I don't know training for free like you don't need to pay anything so you can just do that but I was aware of with digital marketing doing coursework doesn't really help like having that basic knowledge knowledge is really important so um, before the job interview I did you know study like do some like free coursework and stuff last thing is just ask advice in person I think this is like the strongest thing like if you have someone around you that are working in that field that you want to work then just like go and ask them like what was the job in um, process like what kind of job are you doing can I prepare myself to get like a job like yours so, you know just ask Whole different questions to those people and I'm pretty sure they are happy to help and, and give you those resources so go and ask people get advice 
that's what I did as well. I got a whole like all, all good advice from people around me and also it's very motivating, inspiring if you receive those advice because you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna you know, challenge myself and you know, I, I think it's such a strong thing to do. So, so yeah, I think that's it. That's kind of how I actually made this career change. Oh geez, that was so long. <laughs> Uh. but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video yeah if you find it helpful or if you find this video very interesting then please leave a comment and thumbs up this video um that would be very very helpful for me i don't know but what do you guys think like what do you guys think about career itself like are you are you a career person or are you just more like job is just a job um i would love to know your perspective on that for mine like i said my perspective changed so it was never like consistent perspective so yeah please let me know in that in the comments and don't forget to follow my instagram as well it's here i will leave the link down below as well so go and um follow me <laughs> um okay i think that's it i'm not gonna talk anymore i'm gonna go have lunch now so I hope you guys have a lovely day. I wish you all the best if you're looking for a new job. Um, and yeah, have a happy, safe, healthy new year. And I will talk to you guys later.